G'day folks, Rod Moore here. Welcome to my studio. Um, I'm from Moore Art School and Learn to Paint Academy. So I'm a professional artist and professional art teacher and I've been doing that full time now for oh, the last three years. Uh, did my very first oil painting in November 2010. So coming up to eight years since I did my first oil painting. And before that I fluffed around with watercolor for a while. And uh, so I wanna to talk to you about the fourth stage is learning to paint. Um, I did a art chat like this, a studio art chat uh, last week and uh, asked you if you wanted to see more of this type of um, conversation about becoming an artist and, and how to earn an income as an artist. And uh, so I got some pretty positive feedback from that. So I, uh, I will continue to do that while there's interest in it. So I'm just gonna share my experiences with you and how I went from becoming uh, well, I did my very first painting in 2006, so that was 12 years ago. And um, well, I'll tell you the story briefly, and then I'll talk to you about the four stages of learning to paint. So in 2006, I was running a marketing consultancy business, a small business, and I broke my coffee mug, right? Broke my coffee mug. So I, uh, I went next door to the $2 shop, and I'd never painted anything in my life. I'd always been a creative person, but never painted anything in my life and um, never even thought to, right? Um, I've been a musician in my 20s and 30s, but here I was in my 40s. Uh, well, not quite, I was in my late 30s. Broke my coffee mug, sitting in my office, needed coffee, went next door to the $2 shop to buy a coffee mug and saw all these colors and brushes and canvases. And I thought to myself, I'd love to have a go at that, right? At painting. So I bought everything. Bought everything I'd get my hands on and took it all home. And that weekend I did a painting, one painting, right? And I'm sharing this with you because I think it's a pretty common experience with people who uh, would love to learn how to paint and maybe one day earn an income and make it their life uh, from a creative pursuit. So I did one painting and I looked at it and it didn't quite line up with the masterworks that I'd seen from Monet and people like that, right? And so I quickly concluded, and this is what so many beginners do, that I had no talent whatsoever for painting. So what did I do? I packed everything into a box, having done my one painting, and all those art supplies went under a box, and uh, under, under the bed, not to be looked at for two years, right? Um, why, you know, why? Why did that happen? And why is that the experience of so many beginners? Now, I, I don't say that lightly. I've, through the Learn to Paint Academy, I've taught 20,000 plus people now how to, how to paint. So I get emails every day from beginners and, and uh, comments and feedback and so on. And, you know, I've come to the conclusion that there's a very definite process of learning how to paint. Most people aren't aware of that when they start out. And so they give up too early. And this is what I did, right? I gave up. I packed all my art supplies under the bed for two years. Now, I won't tell you the rest of the story why I got started again and so on. What I want to share with you is the four stages of learning to paint. And if you understand this, then you'll be able to recognize where you are right now in your journey. And you'll know exactly what you need to do to be able to progress, right? So I'm going to talk about gaining competency as an artist, you know, gaining skills of becoming a good artist, even master level artist, um, and then in future art studio chats, I'm going to talk to you about how do you then take that skill of art and turn it into a full-time income. And there's many different ways to do that. There's many avenues, but most artists or most people who enter the art world, I think, are too fixed in a model that worked in the 1980s, right? 1970s, 1980s. Uh, and the world's changed, right? Completely changed in the last decade or two. And uh, But artists haven't got their head around that yet, you know? Um, Taxi drivers haven't got their head around the fact that Uber and Lyft, I think it is in America, you know, now compete with them. They just can't get their head around it. They're starting to. So I'm going to talk to you about how the world's changed and how to take that artistic skill and turn it into some sort of income, whether that's part-time or full-time. We'll get to that in future Art Studio Chats. For now, I think it's important that we understand these four stages of learning how to become a good artist because they will apply to learning how to become a career artist as well, how to make an income from it. So there are four stages we move through with everything we learn in life. And the very first stage is unconscious incompetent, right? Unconscious incompetent. So what that means is we're incompetent, we have no skills, 
but we don't even know. So we're unconscious. We're not consciously aware of the fact that we don't know the skills that we don't have. Right? So when I walked into that art supplies or that $2 shop and I saw all the art supplies to buy a coffee mug, right? I didn't know what I didn't know about painting. So what did I do? I went and bought every color I could. I came home with like 30 colors and about 20 brushes, right? And I had no idea how to use any of it, but I didn't even know that I didn't know that until I had a go, right? So we all start out with everything in life being unconsciously incompetent, no skills. We're incompetent, but we're not even aware of the skills that we don't have. So that is the very first stage. And this stage is when we have our first go. At, at painting or whatever creative endeavor that we're pursuing, right? This is the point where people do what I did. We have a go. It turns out a disaster, naturally, because we don't know what we're doing. And we don't even know the things that we don't know that we're not doing. And we give up. We quit on that, right? And that's what I did. I put all my stuff under the bed. So I was unconscious incompetent. I didn't know enough at that point to know that there was another stage to get to. And that's where you become conscious of your own incompetence, so you still don't have the skills, right? But maybe you watch some YouTube videos or you take a course on painting or you buy a book and you start hearing words like composition, color mixing, right? Things like that. Um, and you start to have a conscious awareness of the things that you don't know about. So you're still incompetent as far as creating a good composition. You're still incompetent as far as you know, mixing secondary colors and, and um, graying colors down. You know, you don't have the... Uh, the competency to be able to do those things effectively. But now at least you know that there's these concepts around color mixing or composition or whatever it is, right? Brush technique. Um, you have a conscious awareness of your own incompetence, right? And this is a frustrating period for a lot of people because you now know all the buzzwords and you know what you should be doing, but you can't translate that into an actual finished painting. And that's a really frustrating period for a lot of people. And this is a period where most people will quit on their dreams of becoming an artist. Uh, or they start to assume they don't have natural talent and skill and ability, which is completely 100% incorrect. Um, talent and skill and ability don't really play a part in becoming a good painter. Maybe they play a part in becoming a master artist, you know, that, that top half a percent of artists in the history of the world. Maybe they do, but in becoming a good painter, a uh, good artist of any type, you know, I, I don't know that having natural skill and talent is necessarily what you need. So what you need to do in this second phase, this conscious and competent phase, is you need to give yourself the gift or the, allow yourself to make a lot of mistakes and to, to turn out a lot of bad work that you're not going to be happy with. So this is the period where you need to gain as much knowledge as you can and practice a lot and be prepared to make a lot of mistakes. Um, if, you, if you're able to move through this phase with that understanding that it's okay to make mistakes, it's okay to do paintings that don't work, it's okay to have a lot of failures, right? But keep going through that phase. It's a, and it can be a very frustrating um, phase for people. And, and I spent you know quite a few years in this phase where I, I had this conscious awareness because I studied everything. I bought every course, every DVD, I read every book. So I had all this theoretical knowledge around you know, cool colors, warm colors, and how to mix them and grays. And, you know, I could talk your ear off about all this stuff, but I couldn't translate it onto the canvas because I was consciously aware, but I was incompetent in my skills, right? Frustrating period to be in. And if you're in this period right now, this is the period where you've just got to just keep focus on your end game, right? Keep focus on the end goal of becoming a good artist. Um, most of the students who come to me are usually in this phase, so I've taught 25,000 students now through the Learn to Paint Academy. It used to be called More Art School, but we've turned it into the Learn to Paint Academy. Uh, 25,000 students have been through at least our free course or more. And um, most of them come to me at that consciously incompetent. They know a little bit. They know some of the things that they should know, but they can't translate it into real world skill on the canvas. So if you find yourself in that part, in that phase right now where you have some conscious awareness of what you need to be doing, but you can't create good results in the canvas. I'd recommend that you keep learning, keep studying, but most importantly, keep practicing. 
Um, do as many paintings as you can. I mean, if you could see my walls right now here, I've got, there's 40 small eight by 10 paintings and half a dozen, you know, like I, I'm prolific. I do a lot of painting, right? Um, that's the way you move through the second stage of being conscious, but incompetent. So the third stage is when you start to become a good artist. This is where you are consciously aware of everything you need to be doing, but, and you become competent at it as well. You know that you need to gray off an area to make it sit in the distance, and you have the, co the competency to know how to mix that correctly. Okay? Um, you have the competency to know where to put your cools and your warm colors, or to how to mix you know, five different shades of green. You have the, the ability to be able to do that but here's the thing, at this stage, and this is where a lot of very good intermediate artists are, right? Um, at this stage of your development, what happens is you have to think about everything, right? So you have the skills, you can put it up on the on the canvas and you can, you can put a good painting down, but you're still consciously thinking about everything that you do. So I've got to make a palm tree with the leaves. Now, how am I going to do that, right? Okay, I need my palette knife, I need to mix up a shadow green and then I need to put the highlight. So you, you're processing it on a conscious level. You're thinking about everything you need to do, but you're still able to do it so that you create an overall you know, effect, a good painting. So you're conscious about what you're doing and you're competent. You have the skills and ability, right? This is a great phase to be in because if you can get to this phase, you can go on and become what I call a working artist. You can start to generate an income and a career from it, right? This is the phase that I really had to push through and, um, and get to this point where I was consciously competent. And once I got to that point, I was able to really generate a full-time you know, income as an art teacher and an mm -hmm. artist, selling my art, but also um you know teaching students right and once i started to really you know know that i could i i knew what i needed to know and i was also able to translate that into reasonably good paintings now my paintings aren't great i'm not going to sit here and say i'm the greatest artist ever i'm not right um, but i'm on a journey it's a process and if you understand that it's a journey it's not something that you're ever born with this natural talent and if you're not give up which is what most people do it's a journey and a process, and you need to understand where you are in that process, right? So most intermediate painters, they're very competent, but the, you know they have to still think it through sometimes, and um, so they're consciously processing it. But here's where it gets really interesting is the fourth stage, and this is where you stop thinking about it. You have the competency, so you become an unconscious, competent <coughs> artist. And this is the goal I think we should all aim for. This is where I think all great artists have got to, is that they have all the competency in the world. They, they can, there's nothing they don't know. Um, they can translate everything into, into paintings, you know. <coughs> Pardon me. But they've stopped thinking about it. And now instead of painting from their head, they start to paint from their heart, their emotions, their soul, right? And, and so they become uh, freer to express their creative, or to have a creative expression of their themselves. Uh, they no longer have to think about how do I mix a gray? They just mix without conscious awareness, right? Unconscious competency is where you want to aim to get. Now, how long will it take you to move from unconscious incompetent at the very start through the four stages to becoming unconsciously competent, uh, that that can take some time, you know. For some people, that'll take a few years, and for other people, that might take decades, right? So I, I did my first oil painting in November 2018, and I, I don't think I'm still at that unconscious competent stage. I am to a degree. There are certain things that I do without thinking about it, um, but there are other things I have to stop and, and think about. So I'm still processing some of it, and I've been painting for, you know, um, well, professionally for the last couple of years and uh, did my first oil painting eight years ago, right? So it really depends how long that's going to take. For some people, it might take two decades. Some people, it might take mm -hmm. three months. Either way, what does it matter, you know? As long as you know that there's a journey for you to go along and if you just continue on that journey and, and have a vision of where you want to get to and, and stay focused on the journey of that vision, then you could become a very, very good artist. Now, getting to true mastery, yeah, maybe that's not for everyone. You know, I don't think it's for me. I don't think I'm going to go down the history of the world as one of the great artists. Um, it's probably not going to happen. I doubt it very much. 
Um, I think that's reserved for a very small percentage of people, but that doesn't mean you can't become a working artist who makes a substantial income from their art. Um, and so if you look at those four stages, at what point do you start to become an artist who starts to sell their work, right? Uh, whether that's online or in galleries and art shows and so on. Um, at what point do you become a working artist? You know, part-time income, full-time income, uh, well, I think you do it as soon as you possibly can. Once you get beyond that frustrated period where most of what you turn out is, you know, not that great and you want to bin it, right? I've, I've been, let me be honest, right? I've been hundreds of paintings that didn't work. Um, I don't bin so many these days, but over the first five years, I've filled up a skip full of paintings, right? Um, so... You know, that, that's a frustrating early stages. Um, but I was still selling work then. Now, I wasn't getting great prices because I'm not a known national artist that's in high demand, but I was still selling work that paid for my art supplies that kept me going, right? And then as I moved into that more consciously competent stage, probably in the last couple of years, uh, I've been able to sell my work online and um, I get a lot of people approach me uh, for commissions that I do, which I don't know why is necessarily... Um, talk about but you know once you get momentum and, and you get that competent stage and you're able to turn out reasonably good paintings right um, then you can start selling them no problem at all and what I recommend is that you find a marketplace to start selling um, you know find a, a marketplace where people are already going to buy art and put your artwork up there and just keep doing that and repeating that process over and over and over time you gain traction right now I don't want to talk about selling art in this video because uh, I want to, you know, progressively build up these art chats so that you can, uh, you can have a roadmap to follow. Because there's nothing exceptional about me at all. I, I think I approached the art world differently to what most artists do, and um, and I've understood a few things that maybe others haven't, like the four stages of learning. Uh, even though I did quit initially, um, but you know, I studied a lot of human psychology and and how we learn and so on, which is how I became aware of these four stages of learning. And, and once I got really clear that this is what I want to do with the rest of my life, I'd known it's just been a journey, you know, and I'm on that journey right now. And, and no doubt you are if you're watching this, if you're still watching, right, you're on a journey and you're just moving through different stages of that journey. Now, here's the really interesting thing. If you want to learn how to paint, you don't always want to go to the best artist you can find. Why? Because if you think about it, they become unconsciously competent. In other words, that they no longer have to think about all the things that they're doing to create a great painting. And if that's the case, how do they articulate what they're doing in a, in a classroom or workshop environment? Very difficult for a really... There aren't that many master artists who are great teachers, I don't think. Most of the workshops that I've done over the years with other artists um, who are, you know, I've gone to the very best that I could find in Australia. Uh, most of them, they don't teach, they demonstrate. In other words, they do a painting, right? They do a painting and you watch. <laughs> now, if you don't know what to look for, then you're going to miss the subtleties of what they're doing that really make them a great artist. And uh, so you don't necessarily want to go to uh, a great artist because if they're unconsciously competent in their in the paintings they produce, then they may not be able to articulate to you what it is that they're doing um, in, in a way and uh, in a way that you can benefit from. So just keep that in mind, right? Uh, not always the best artists are the best teachers. So sometimes the ability to be able to teach but also being a good good artist is what you want to find. You know, when you're, when you're looking for somebody to help you move through those four stages of learning to paint. So the four stages... You start out unconscious, incompetent, right? You don't even know what you don't know. The second stage is you become consciously aware of things in the art world, but you still don't have the, the skill to be able to translate that onto the canvas. You're conscious, but incompetent still. Then you move into the third stage, which is you become consciously competent. So you're aware of things, you learn things, you understand fundamentals of painting, and you uh, you now have some competency, some ability to be able to put, put down a, a half-decent painting. And then the fourth stage is you become unconsciously, you forget all the things that you learn, right? You just do them on autopilot 
which is a great place to be from an artistic point of view because you don't have to think. You can It frees you up to have greater artistic expression. And I think that's a goal we should all aim for is to get to that point where you paint from the heart and the soul uh, rather than from the head, right? Very important. One of the challenges I have as an art teacher is trying to explain it and, and not paint from the head is very, very difficult. Uh, but that's conversation for another matter. So they're the four stages of learning. Hopefully you can identify where you are in one of those stages right now. And here's the, thing, the, the takeaway message I want to leave with you. It doesn't matter where you are. It's a journey and a process. There, there's very few great artists who were born with a natural till, uh, skill and ability to, for art. Some do, but it's such a small percentage of, of good artists that it does. It's, you might as well never think about it. Anyone can become a really good artist if they just stick on that journey of moving through those four stages. Ultimately, it boils down to learning the fundamentals, right? Really getting to understand how to create atmospheric perspective, how to you know construct a painting, composition, color mixing. You, you, you just have to know all that stuff, right? Um, but then once you've got those that fundamental knowledge, it's not enough to have the, the knowledge. You then have to paint and paint and paint and paint and paint and eventually you break through to that conscious competence stage. All right. Now, I can see a few of you have left comments there, and I really appreciate it. Unfortunately, on my mobile phone, they're appearing, and then they're disappearing, so I won't be able to answer them live for you. Uh, maybe next time I'll set my laptop up so I can see the comments as they come in. Um, but if you've enjoyed this art chat and you think it's helped, let me know in the comments. Leave a yes that you'd like to see more like this, because I've got a lot of information to share. You know, I've been on a journey since 2010, trying to figure out how to become a full-time working artist and earn my living from it. And I've, in the last two years, I've broken through the barriers of being able to do that. And I've got a lot that I can share with you about learning to paint, because that's what I do. I teach people to paint, but also how to become a professional artist. And if that's what you want to do, if you want to hear more about that, leave a comment you know, leave a like on this video, um, subscribe to the channel and say, yes, you want to learn more. And I'll do these a couple of times a week and um, over you know, the coming weeks and months, uh, hopefully we'll be able to you know, change some people's lives and help you become a, a more successful artist, whatever that means to you. All right. Thank you very much for joining me and uh, have a great day. Leave a comment if you've enjoyed this. Cheers.